hello welcome to everyone in this video in this video i want to discuss uh, about the previous year question of calcutta university for the semester one of physics honors of this paper mechanics okay this is this is two paper already we discuss uh, previous years lectures on mathematical methods and mechanics also and there is separate theoretical part also if you want you can go to this channel you will be get different playlist okay so let's start today's discussion at first you can see the total question paper of this year 2021 physics on a cc2 paper which is mechanics first this is question number one from a to g after that question number two then three four five six and finally seven these are the total seven question of this paper so i request all of you try solve this question for yourself after that continue this video to watch the solution first question says so that newton's second law of motion remain invariant under galilean transformation this is a previous year question if you already was the previous year 2018 i think uh, this already discussed there also so here we also discussed or want to discuss these things again <coughs> Consider two frame that is the S frame and this is the S prime frame which is moving with the velocity V with respect to this rest frame. Any point P with the coordinate X, Y, Z in S frame that is any point P uh, with respect to S frame the coordinate is X, Y, Z and with respect to S prime frame the coordinate of that point is X prime, Y prime, Z prime. So from the transformation equation, Galilean transformation equation actually Galilean transformation equation says that x prime equal to x minus vt because this is distance vt so this x prime equals to x minus vt and y prime z prime t prime are equal to y z t respectively so any position vector with this respect of the prime frame will be like that so the velocity will be this one and you can see this <coughs> r prime equal to the dx prime by dt dx prime equal to x minus vt so finally you will be get this thing minus i vt so acceleration again a derivative with respect to t you will be obtained this one and this is a so you can see here you can see here the acceleration velocity is not same with this system but there is a minus i v i cap v vector but acceleration is the same in the, to these two systems so this force also will be the equal in newtonian theorem mass is invariant under transformation right in galilean transformation the mass is invariant in Einstein relativity mass is variant but here the mass is invariant so you can uh, say that m prime and m are equal so a prime equals to f that is that that says that the <coughs> Newton's second law that is the force is uh, same with respect to these two frame so the Newton's second law of motion remain invariant under the Galilean transformation but in the Lorentz transformation which related to Einstein relativity is not invariant for Newton's second law. Um, this is the basic difference of that one. We can see also there that is in sorry in a moving frame. This is not continuous here. So look at the next question. Next question says that so that for a body of variable mass a moving with momentum p that is linear momentum obviously acting upon an external force will be like that what is the kinetic energy of the bodies this is also previous year question of Calcutta university mechanics part so here in the external force is nothing but dp dt the linear rate change of the linear momentum is the force the rate change of the linear momentum is the force so uh, if he wants to find out from left hand to right hand right hand side so dt of m into t that is the mass into kinetic energy will be dt of m into t is the kinetic energy that is half m v square so this is half m square v square v square can be written as v dot v no problem so this can be written as m v dot m v vector dot m v vector m is scalar so mass into velocity is the linear momentum so this is p dot p if you derivative with respect to t this can become like that half is constant so this is dp dt dot p and this is p dot dp dt so this uh, commutative 
you know dot product is commutative so there is two and half cancel out so you'll be get dp dt into p dot p and you know dp dt is the force so this is force dot momentum linear momentum so this is proved i think clear next question if there is any doubt you must comment in the comment box if there is any query next question a particle is acted upon by a force f so this is the force so that the force is conservative and then find the corresponding scalar potential so to check whether the force is uh, uh, conservative or not you just take the curl of this force so if you just uh, take the curl of this force expression you can see there is i cap j cap k by del del x del del y del del z that is del operator and then uh, coefficient of i cap y z this is x z and this is x y now find out this determinant i cap when you take this i cap del del y of this one this is x del del z of this one that is also x similarly j cap del del z of this one this is y then del del x of this one this is also y and for k cap del del x of xz that is z and the little y of yz that is also z so this gives you zero since the scale of any vector any force vector is zero then f that is the force vector must be conservative for conservative force the scale of this force vector must be zero this is the property of the conservative force field we know in the theoretical class we already discussed these things that is the for conservative force field, the curl of this force must be equals to zero. So, if you so you can conclude that is the force is conservative. Now we need to find out the corresponding scalar potential. Since the curl of F is zero, so you can take F is some uh, grad V. We take minus here for conservation. So minus grad V. So if you compare this F is like that and grad V equal to expand expand with this one because grad is i cap del del x plus j cap del del y plus k cap del del z and then compare the coefficient of i cap you will be this one uh, and that is this v, vx the co, co, x component like that so this gives you the a minus x y z some function and v y similarly if you compare with the j cap coefficient of j cap will be obtained this one and third you will be get this one so you will be see this is the same things and this is the any other function so you can see generalized formula of this potential scalar potential will be like that go to the next one next question says an idea uh, an object made of a thin wire shaped like a square with length l this is the length l of a square of this raw uh, uh, rod like um, okay Square. Mass m. What is the moment of inertia of this object and axis passing through the center of the square that is O and perpendicular to the plane of it? So, you are saying this is a, a axis which is perpendicular to this plane and passing through this origin. What will be the moment of inertia? For a single side, for a single side, the moment of inertia can be calculated like that. You know, for a rod, if the axis is perpendicular to this center the moment of inertia of this uh, of this body about this axis is 1 by 12 m into l square and you know this total mass is capital m so mass of this one side will be m by 4 so that's why we write here 1 by 12 m l square m is the m by 4 here so finally you will obtain m l square by 48 so this is the moment of inertia of this rod where the axis passing through the center of this rod and uh, 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 which is perpendicular to this plane now the from the parallel axis theorem you know if you know about the center of uh, if you know about the moment of inertia of a body about the axis which passing through the center of mass is uh, you, you can find out the center uh, center of the moment of inertia of this body about any axis which is parallel to this axis so you can think uh, the, the you know the moment of inertia of this rod about this uh, axis which is passing through here so you can easily find out the moment of inertia of this body when the axis considered along that so these two are parallel so this moment of inertia will be this um, uh, that is moment of inertia obtained here into a mass 
in product by the distance square so mass is m by 4 of this part and uh, length is l by 2 so finally will be obtained this one so far the side of the loop the moment of inertia must be that is the total moment of inertia of the body will be uh, 4 is multiplied with this one because the moment of inertia of this side about the origin of the center of this body uh, square body will be like that so the moment of inertia would be 4 into this one so finally will be obtained this expression one third ml square clear next question next question says <laughs> the trajectory of a particle of mass m is described in cylindrical polar coordinate system where z dot equals to 0 theta dot equals to omega and r which is a function like that sin hyperbolic omega t compute the radial component of force <coughs> so you need to find out the radial component of the force you know from the cylindrical polar coordinate system the radial component of the acceleration is like that r double dot minus r theta dot square right uh, the radial component of the force so this is the radial component of the acceleration what will be the radial component of the force if you multiply this m mass of this body with this one you will be get this one now you can see here this r is given here so if you take the time derivative with respect uh, of this r gives you that omega r0 cos hyperbolic omega t. you know the derivative of sin hyperbolic is cos hyperbolic and derivative of cos hyperbolic is sin hyperbolic so if you take an, again the uh, derivative with respect to time will be obtained sign again and this is nothing but r so r double dot is omega square r so put this value this is omega square r and this is r at theta dot the question given that theta dot is omega so if you put you will get the same thing so this will become zero so the radial component of this force is force is zero <coughs> next question prove that the motion of a particle uh, particle under influence of central force confined in a plane this is also previous year question uh, so just simple this is a uh, equation of a central force so if you take the cross product of this force with respect to radial vector will give you zero because r cross r now this force can be written as mass into dv dt so this is nothing but dt of r cross b because you can you know this r dr dt is 0 this is the central force so uh, velocity so uh, this is equals to 0 so this vector is some constant vector derivative of this cross product is 0 so this must be a constant so taking as a vector because this is a vector quantity now if you dot this r dot h you will be get 0 that's mean that's mean the r vector always perpendicular to h vector we can say since r dot h r is the position vector of the particle of the particle r is the position vector of the particle and h is constant vector and that dot product zero means the r vector is perpendicular to h vector suppose this is h vector this is r vector so this r vector always perpendicular to h vector and h is constant so a r is confined within a plane because h is constant vector and r is always perpendicular to the h vector h is constant vector and r is perpendicular to h vector always that's mean r is moved within a plane so you can conclude that is the central force confined in a plane clear go to the next one this question says state the equation of continuity continuity means there is a flow of any fluid fluid means gaseous or liquid then the volume passes per unit area must be constant so you can say that is the product of the cross section area multiplied by the velocity of the fluid at this cross section must be constant that means when the cross-section area will be reduced, the speed of the fluid will be increased. You know these things very well in your daily life. Uh, if you consider a, a pipe which flowing the water. Now if you uh, punch this uh, outgoing or mouth of the pipe with the pressure uh, with the, by your hand, you can see the speed of the water flow or 
moving out the water from this pipe outlet you can see will be increased velocity will be increased if you reduce the cross section area of the pipe okay so these things actually says here continuity equation next things is what is the geometrical moment of inertia actually the moment of inertia gives you the inertia property for a rotating body moment of inertia is the inertia property for a rotating body inertia property means the a rest body wants to make its rest and moving body wants to make its moving until or unless if you, you apply a external sufficient force. So this is the inertia property and this is the moment of inertia, geometrical moment of inertia when you can see here this perpendicular to the plane of the integral over the area of the figure. That means a two dimension figure if you consider and a plane for that you will be get the moment of inertia about the axis. So I think clear if there is any doubt you must comment in the comment box and this is all about me and this is my contact detail you can connect me with this telegram channel and this is my youtube channel uh, details you will be get different features videos some mathematics like this session if you learn something from this session share this video to your friends either he or she also get benefit from this video subscribe this channel if you need this channel those already subscribe thanks for subscription uh, press the bell icon to get notification of so take care we'll meet in the next video as soon as possible thank you